A team of professionals from Beston Consulting Firm has concluded a series of public consultations with residents from St. George Northwest, St. John, and St. Mark, who will be impacted once work commences on the Western Main Road corridor in 2022. Project team leader Mandish Singh told the residents that the work, which will be divided into five packages, will involve significant upgrade to the existing 26 kilometers of road from the National Stadium in St. George's to Waltham in St. Mark. What we're doing is we're prioritizing the Monadier landslip. So already we have the concept designs for the Monadier, Monadier landslip um, completed. We are now looking at the costings of it and the various pros and cons of the concepts that we've come up with. But the idea is that we get um, contractors on the ground in the first quarter of next year. So between, say, I would say February and March, you should see um, construction activity at one near um, landslip. Um, progressing on from there, we will have uh, packages of work, as Kishan has alluded to. We've um, split the project into various packages and um, getting tenders for those out early next year so that we can get construction started probably um, around about April onwards um, for the other packages. We are looking to get the entire road completed by the end of 2023, which means there'll be multiple packages of work and multiple contractors. Um, it's not going to be just one big contractor starting from one end and working their way along. It'll just take too long if we take that approach. So that's the um, construction strategy. Civil engineer Kishan Ramkisun gave a visual presentation as to the scope of work to be carried out. Ramkisun says climate change is one of the main mitigating factors in coming up with the right designs to execute the project. We're also looking at the construction of drainage features on both sides of the road um, to prevent, firstly, um, to capture all runoff all rainwater um, runoff and also to prevent the road from eroding. Um, we're also looking at repairing and replacing all dilapidated and undersized culverts. We're also doing, also proposing channel protection works for rivers and streams in terms of placing material so that the foundations of those structures will not be eroded. We're also looking at vegetation maintenance so that during storms or whatever the case may be um, in terms of rock or so, um, you won't have that blocking of the roadway in the future. And we're also looking at doing construction of short retaining walls for minor land surfaces. The team's environment engineer, Alison King, shared on her role in the execution of the project and how they will work towards ensuring minimal discomfort to residents. From an environmental perspective, I am looking at the environmental services that exist along that road. How do you use the forest? How do you use the rivers, the marine space adjacent to the, the road? Um, what concerns you may have in relation to those services uh, and how you would recommend that we, we mitigate those possible impacts. Uh, there may be locations where natural hazards may be of concern to you. There may be areas that are prone to flooding. You want to make sure that, that those types of issues are, are properly managed through the design so that they, they, they no longer are an issue when the new road is put into operation. So those kinds of things. Residents were told that they will have to make certain adjustments once the project commences as unavoidably there will be increased dust, noise and traffic delays.